Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Another new guitar day. We've got five brand new guitars here. I think one of them is Epiphone. We got a couple of Fenders thrown in. I'm not sure if there's a Gibson in here or not. We'll find out. But let's go ahead and start with this one. I believe, judging by the way this feels, it's either a Fender that comes in a gig bag or maybe an Epiphone. Dramatic opening. Okay, it's from Fender. <laughs> but that doesn't sound so good in there. Hopefully it's okay. I think I just might know what's in this one. Okay, so at least we've got a gig bag. Most of those, uh, the Fender lead I had purchased, it didn't have a gig bag at all. This is looking like it's a blast from the past that the person who purchased this guitar through my new Guitar Day program, they're eagerly awaiting my review of this so I can send it on their way. So it will likely be an expedited review here. Cool, we even get a little bag in here. Oh, what? Sorry, man, that's not the guitar I thought it was. Oh no, it is, it is, okay. I thought it was a troublemaker telly for a second. <laughs> oh boy, okay. So it says Strat on the headstock, so that means it's one of them fancy guys. Bam. I was telling you guys about this one on the uh, reverb shopping episode last night. I was not going to choose white, but somebody really wanted the white one. I was going to go for the blue myself, but oh, oh, wow. I like that. Do you guys see that on the face of the headstock? I'm definitely going to talk about that on the full review and demo. The Strat logo is actually like semi what metallic. So that white stripe underneath it, the letters that's on it, it kind of changes colors in the light. So it just looks different. Interesting. I was gonna say, I didn't think it was time for the troublemaker tellies. Let's go ahead and move on to second dramatic unboxing here. Let's feel it first. Okay, this feels like it's a gig bag or a very lightweight case. So it leaves us with the same options as last time. I had just purchased so many brand new guitars and I thought like all the boxes that I was waiting to open were Epiphones. But it turns out we got some fenders in here yet, too. I don't, I don't think the Gibsons have shipped quite yet. That's kind of the, the downside to pre-ordering, is you gotta wait. You gotta wait for everything to come in. And it seems like everything comes in batches, so I just get flooded with like 20 guitars. But then again, I'm kind of alone in this position of buying this many guitars all the time. Now this has a regular box, so I'm guessing that this is actually an Epiphone. Let's get these staples out. I wonder if it's cheaper to use staples than tape. I don't like using them as much, but I don't know. Would it be more environmentally friendly or not? Probably. Okay, see, here's what we were talking about. Remember last time, some of the Epiphone employees pack them like this. Whereas other ones use this as the cushion to not have to use bubble wrap. That's interesting. I guess it's probably the musician's friend employees, not the Epiphones, because I don't know if anybody who's uh, actually part of like a large retail chain, does Epiphone just send them on a big pallet like this? That's what I would imagine they would do, but who knows? I know a lot of people have been like, do the Firebird, do the Firebird. There's at least one guy who comments that all over YouTube. Is it your day, buddy? It's kind of a small box for a Firebird, but who knows? Oh, nice, nice. This is the Les Paul Muse. Oh, interesting. This one's actually taped down. So this is another one that is part of the Epiphone Modern Les Paul collection. What is going on here? It's still taped down there, okay. There we go. 
the big reveal. Nice. So I had a really, really difficult time choosing what color for the Les Paul Muse. I think I also have the SG Muse somewhere as well. Eventually, I think I went with green because somebody pre-ordered this through me. I could be wrong on that. I kind of forget. But wow, I really like this metallic finish. It's got some sparkliness to it. It looks like one of those Les Paul Moderns in a way. We've even got neck binding on it. Cool. Interesting. It's got the cutaway to it. Um, some light scratches, but the thing with the new Epiphones are the frets. So let's go ahead and give this guy a test. Yeah, that one's actually pretty good. Good job, Epiphone. I mean, I didn't mean to hate on Epiphone that last one. It's just I had like five unboxings and only one of them was like stellar, out of the park, out of the box. But this one, it's another good one. I'm digging this finish. Wow. I can't wait to see those other ones in person. I mean, it, I, I can see a few small finish flaws here and there, but I think that's come to be expected on a guitar at this price range. I'm really looking forward to reviewing this one now. Cool. All right, so one Fender, one Epiphone. This is an abnormally large box. I'm not sure what would be in here. It feels, maybe this is the Firebird. I know I bought one, I just don't know if it's shipped or not yet. Oh, nope, not a Firebird. a big Epiphone box. Jeez, I mean, look in comparison. A tiny little guy. Big guy. What could it be if it is not a Firebird? Cool. I do believe that this would be an Explorer. I don't think I've ever touched an Epiphone Explorer. Well, unless you count this thing. Let's take a look, see here. Beautiful dark black finish. I think the thing I like about the uh, Epiphone Explorers and like the other pointy guitars like the V's is they look more like the Gibson Brethren because they have like the exact same headstock. I mean, there's small differences, but it's not as big as on the Les Paul and SGs. So in my eyes, these have always been superior in that aspect. You can tell the body, it like slightly bulges out right there. Just, just a hair. So maybe that's just something that's different about the Epiphone style of things. But this is a pretty chunky feeling guitar. The, the action's about what I expect. Neck's also in good shape. But let's go ahead and check these frets real quick. Uh, again. It's always that spot. So always that fifth fret on these guys. This one, it doesn't seem too bad. There's like, uh, I would say about three to four frets that are a little bit high on it. I'm still practicing with that Stumac stuff. I'll be honest, I'm not feeling very confident about it at this point, but hopefully in the future, I will feel more comfortable working on these guitars to get them uh, back up to 100% playing. But until then, I think this one, uh, it needs something done to it. It's but once again, we do have some slightly high frets on a brand new Epiphone because that neck is pretty much dead straight. And the sponsor for today's episode is me. Did you know I offer private help sessions on my website? Yes, you can talk to me guaranteed for as low as $5. I'll answer your question, anything you want, about the show, about a guitar you're looking at, or if you need help verifying the originality of your guitar, or a guitar that you're planning on purchasing, you are $20 away from peace of mind. So you can do that at troglisguitarshow.com. And now that we have some space back, let's go ahead and get into these other two. This one. Ooh, that's pretty bulky. I would have to guess that this might be something that, well, I think people will like this one. It's gonna be a slightly higher end fender. Okay. 
Or it's something else that I just don't remember. <laughs> nice. This reminds me of when uh, Guitar Center sent me, they sent me something that had this acoustic foam type stuff. Oh, this is from Gibson. Okay, I have no idea what's in here. Oh, oh. okay, maybe I do, maybe I do, because I think I've only pre-ordered a handful of new Gibsons. Everything else was pretty much Epiphone this time because Gibson did not get a lot of new stuff at 2020 NAM. They did get that lower end junior. I'd like to check one of those out. But this is a heavily requested review. Take our topper off, all this other stuff. Wow, there's not too much in there. That, my friends, is a Les Paul case. But we can deduce that it is not a custom shop because custom shops get different cases. Um, it wouldn't be that lower end one that I was talking about because that wouldn't even have a case. So leave, leave your guess in the comments section what you think might be in this one because they, I don't think it'd be that hard to guess. The only thing you have to guess is what color is it? Ooh, I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> I don't want to drag this out any longer. The new Slash Standard. So this is Vermilion Burst. Apparently, it looks like they're also going to do a custom shop version of this one. So this is just kind of a uh, predates that. I'm sure we'll see that at Summer Nam potentially, but wow, look at this red color. I'll be honest, I don't really like this finish as much now that I started to see it in person. And the reason is, is I thought the outline was gonna be black, but it's more of just like a dark red and then it's the crimson in the middle. I like this little wood grain line right there. It's like, it's like a cat eye or something. This thing's got a pretty nice top to it. I was kind of scared that uh, the flame was gonna run out there because that's the way it looks at some angles, but that definitely looks awesome at this angle. So first impressions here, I think these are supposed to be what, like the 50 standards? Oh, a funny story. I actually had the opportunity to get one that had a factory non-scully. <laughs> uh, but I decided, oh, I don't want to rag on Gibson too much. But there was one that QC left out the scully on the back of the headstock. But I think this is my first true 2020 guitar. All the other ones have been like November of 2019, but this is made the 14th day of the year. 2020, 125th in production. Yeah, um, I would say I need to get this thing reviewed. <laughs> this is another one that somebody got through my new Guitar Day program. But somebody was telling me that these cases are now made in China. So I want to verify that because I took a pause because this is not the normal latch. They've changed that up. So I would be willing to believe that it is made in China. Where's the tag? Here's all our extra cakes candy. It says made in China. That's a, it's kind of a disappointment to me because I mean, Gibson prides themselves in being USA in production. But if you're making your cases in China, then that's probably why they removed the whole Gibson USA thing. I mean, I get it. Most of the cases anyways were made in Canada, but it's close to the US. But the latches do feel different. Um, the top definitely feels more like an Epiphone case. It's not quite as plush. It's got a decent amount. I mean, it's not bad. This is not a bad case. That's not what I'm trying to say. It just definitely feels different. Not quite as high quality as the Canadian made cases, but the interior does feel a little bit more pillow-like. So it's still a good case. I mean, don't take away that I think it's a bad case. I don't like the way that they hide it either because it used to just be a little tag that kind of stuck out and you would see it. I think they did it that way on purpose because China's on the bottom. But cool, that is definitely a nice example here. Let's go ahead and move on to our final unboxing of the day. That one must be the Fender that I'm thinking of. But there's only one way to tell that for sure. We gotta open it. Oh, and I'm sad to say that this is the last unboxing episode of 
new guitars for this batch. But don't cry because this one's actually being posted before the other one that I recorded earlier today. So that one has some used guitars and something that is going to blow your guys' mind, literally. Like you are gonna ask yourself, how did that guy get that guitar that is so rare? And I'll actually be announcing a sponsored giveaway of an Epiphone. All right, so this is another kind of heavy one. Is it another Gibson? Nope, that looks like Fender to me. And <laughs> unless musician's friend is playing uh, something tricky on me. Zoop, zup, and do. So here we go. I like the way Fender packages their things with cases. I really like these things that keep everything in place. I think it's a very secure way to ship your guitar. Definitely very easy for them. This, this is the one I thought I was unboxing the entire episode. <laughs> but it's nice to finally get into some of the higher end brand new guitars. I don't mind talking about the low end stuff, but I get a couple of fans reaching out saying, hey, well, when are you gonna go back to the Fender Gibson stuff? I'm kind of getting bored of your Epiphone talk. Inside here. The no caster? No, broadcaster. <laughs> Very, very anticlimactic. I wish it was the no caster. That was probably uh that was probably a year or two ago before I was following Fender though, because the Well no, no, that's actually gonna be coming up because I don't want to spoil too much, but the broadcaster was the original name for the telecaster, and then People had issues with that with their drum kit, so they're like, hey, you need to change that. So I think that means in a year or two, whenever it is, I'm not well versed with this history, we'll see no caster reissues. I love the no caster even more, but having a broadcaster, I would love to have an original broadcaster. Wouldn't that be a special treat? But when I ordered this, I didn't realize it was going to be a hairy man finish. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't even know if you guys can see that in the GoPro camera. That's the one thing I hate about those red interior cases is they shed on them. <sighs> but I didn't know it was gonna be the see-through blonde finish. It's, it's, it's an interesting look. I don't know if I like it or if I don't at this time. I think it's an acquired taste, but I love the ash body. I love all the wood grain. It just kind of becomes a weird grayish black color on the wood grain. It is a full gloss neck, so if you like not sticky stuff. You won't like this one. As far as the frets go, it looks like they did okay as far as getting it off of the end. Well, maybe not. Spoke too soon. <laughs> They've got the whole golden fret situation going on. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But yeah, this is the anniversary broadcaster. This is not the custom shop version. It's just the regular one. It's sweet. We even get a very uncomfortable looking vintage strap. How nice is that? So I hope you troglodytes enjoyed today unboxing some brand new guitars with me. We had a couple of Fenders, a couple of Gibsons, an Epiphone. Just a, a nice variety today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.